Hey everybody, it's Tess. Today I wanna to talk to you about tips and tricks you can use for when you have a high tolerance. Before I get into the five tips and tricks, there is gonna be a little bit of a PSA, if you will. What you're not gonna see on this list is take a tolerance break. Uh-uh, no way. You will actually never hear me recommend any stoner ever to take a tolerance break. And I don't think you should either. And here's why. In today's, Fly away here, come on, come on. Where you going, Clint? Oh, you're all wet. We have since come a long way since our relationship with marijuana in the 50s. Meaning, there's a whole long list of reasons why people smoke. See, the thing is, I don't know why you're smoking. I don't know if you're smoking because of depression. I don't know if you're smoking because of MS. I don't know if you're smoking because of any other diagnosis that involves chronic pain. I don't know. What I do know is that we do not currently in time have psychiatrists say, Yes, it seems you've grown a tolerance to your SSRI, so we are in fact going to be stripping you of that medication. Our medical doctors also do not currently say this. Mm, that insulin that you're taking for your diabetes, no love, it seems that you've grown a tolerance to it, so we're actually going to completely take you off of it. It'll help you in the long run. No, you won't die. Well, you might die, but... You've grown a tolerance. I don't know what to tell you, love. So mixed with the fact that I don't know why you're smoking, and also I'm not a doctor, I cannot legally recommend anyone to take a tolerance break. Mm -hmm. So moving forward, guys, please keep that in mind when you're out here willy-nilly and telling people to stop smoking weed because you do not know what's gonna happen to them if they stop. Now, let's get into the video. So the first tip that I have is change the way you ingest your THC. The thing about marijuana is in everybody's body, it breaks down very differently. For one person, brownies, cookies, butters, they might work very well in edible form. But for another individual, like me, they're horrible. <laughs> I just go to sleep. When your tolerance is too high, there's a very strong chance that if you change the way that you ingest that weed, you're gonna get a spike. You're gonna get real high. Now I already hear you now. But I'm a dab a doobie. I dab. Where do I go? I highly recommend Keef. Smoke weed with Keef. The Keef is not gonna be as potent as those dabs, but it's gonna be rivaling close. And hopefully, that might help you phase your way back into weed. If you've been smoking flour, try an edible. But I need you guys to remember that not edibles are the same. Again, your body might reject THC mixed with butter. Your body might reject THC mixed with oil. Hop on over to the dispensary and buy yourself a weed drink. If you normally do edibles, try to take a dab and do. But if you change the way that you ingest it, you might experience a new all-time high. The second tip I have is change your routine. Guys, I'm going to say this multiple times throughout the video. Take a hit every single time I say it. The brain, the brain is, a, is powerful a powerful thing. thing. Psychologically, you associate a lot of objects with a lot of emotions subconsciously every single day. Unfortunately, your weed, your routine, all of that is included in those nasty associations. And that can, in fact, make you feel like you are not getting high. If you normally only smoke for about 20 minutes when you get up in the morning, wake up and smoke for a little bit longer. You really might need it. If you're someone who only takes a couple hits before bed, stay up a little later, you really might need it. Let's say you don't normally smoke in the middle of the day, hold up. Change your routine, take a couple puffs midday, you might need it. But I'm not even talking just change your weed routine. You might need to change some things in your life to get a brand new smoking time. For example, I work for DoorDash, so sometimes when I'm feeling stuck in the same routine, I won't dash in the hours that I normally do so I can smoke in those hours. I know it sounds crazy, but even just knowing that I'm getting high during a time that I normally wasn't supposed to be getting high, it feels great. Step three, change how you are smoking. If you are always smoking blunts or joints or backwoods, you need to start smoking out of a piece. And if you're always smoking the same bowl that you've been smoking since you were 12 years old, you need to get a new one. I can't stress this enough. Having options in how you smoke your weed will change your life. 
Let's say you always use a rig. If you can use a necti collecty, try it. Like I said before, our, our mind, mind is very, very, very powerful. powerful. And psychologically, we can associate negative emotions with objects. Subconsciously, you have already associated your peace with negative emotion and it's no longer giving you the sweet relief of high. It's just, oh man, this is the same monotonous piece that I smoke day in and day out and nothing's getting better, that's great. Shh. There have been times where I smoke my one and a half long shafted I don't know if that's what I want to use there. Or if you're always smoking glass, I highly recommend that you treat yourself to a pre-roll, to a wrap, to a blunt, to a joint, whatever you want. Just treat yourself to something that you would not normally smoke out of. Fourth tip I have is change your environment again. The brain, the brain is, is a, a very, very powerful, powerful thing. thing. And just like you psychologically associate negative emotions to pieces and routines, your environment is no different. I've got a smoke room in my house, and let me tell you, the times that I make myself walk to the residential street parking where I parked my car to enjoy the medicinal effects of THC, I feel higher. A couple reasons why. One, I live with roommates, so subconsciously I'm already kind of stressed out, thinking I don't want to be too loud, I don't want to disturb them, and I feel like I can't really be myself, because myself is weird, and when there's a lot of people around, I cannot be as weird as I want to be. The second reason, because I have mental health, the fact that I have to go to a smoke room already associates my negative side effects of my mental health with that smoke room, because where do you think I'm going when I'm stressed out? To smoke. to smoke. So I would recommend if you're always smoking on the couch, get up. Go smoke on your porch or in your garage. If you're in an apartment, take a walk. Channel your inner high school days when you were forced to find an outdoor location to smoke weed. But changing your environment will 100% help you mentally and physically feel more high. And the fifth and saddest tip that I have is face the reality. I don't know where you are at in your weed journey, but I'm 28 years old. I've been smoking almost every single day since I was 15, so we're coming up on every single day for about 13 years. I've only had two breaks in this entire 13 years, one for five months and one for nine months, but that's it. Something that was very hard for me to realize was that I just needed to smoke more. I got so used to being able to smoke this amount and have it last this long. And when that stopped working for me, I tried to do a lot of things and I thought something was wrong, but the fact is my body just needs more. Sometimes you just grow a tolerance. And I know that sex to hear in a panoramic when half of us can't even pay our bills, we're struggling for food. The last thing a lot of us are thinking is, great, now I get to bust my ass at a job that I don't have to buy weed that I can't afford. So I fully understand that this tip isn't really gonna be for everyone because it's a very niche specific type of person. Someone who in our current day and age can actually afford to buy more and smoke more. But once I finally jumped on the reality train of understanding that Liz is only gonna last me so long and my body is gonna need more of its medicine and just how when I have been on SSRIs we have upped the medication I had to make a very hard choice which was you have to work a little harder so you can up your medication so you can also afford it but I'll be honest upping my meds smoking more has been one of the best things for me because it took a lot of the pressure off of thinking that there was something wrong as to why I could not get high anyway those are the tips and tricks for what you can do if you have a really high High tolerance. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope you have a good night time, morning time, nap time, snack time, queen time. Go follow me on TikTok if you haven't already. Thanks so much, guys. Bye.